Hey everyone, Joey here. Uh, a few weeks ago I had hernia surgery and so I've been doing a lot of resting while I recover. There is a woodworking slash model training related project that I really wanted to get started, but that's been put on hold. I have to move a lot of heavy wood down into the basement, cut it up, and doctor says I need to wait a few more weeks before I start carrying all that heavy stuff around. So, been itching to create a video though, so I figured I'd do something a little less strenuous. So um, I will be recording an upcoming mail call video pretty soon, and I'm kind of tired of using this old thumbnail here. So I figured I'd do something more fun using this HO scale baggage car I've got, and in this video I'll be going over the steps I did to create this new thumbnail. So let's get started. For a little bit of background, I have been a professional photographer for most of my adult life, and I've always loved sharing what I know with others. I even taught a bunch of photography workshops over the years. Now, most of my work has been in weddings and portraiture, but a lot of the same principles apply across all the genres of photography, whether it's weddings, portraiture, or products, or model trains. So I figured in this video what I'll do is I'll share some tips as I go along, and hopefully you can use those to improve the photographs that you take of your model trains. So in this video, I'll demonstrate how I set up a small scene indoors right here in my basement and I'll use artificial light to simulate being outside. Now, for those of you who are wondering what artificial light is, it's basically any man-made source of light. Like this one. So to capture the image, I'm going to be using this here. Now, I know a lot of people don't have access to a professional rig like this, so I'll also be demonstrating how to create a similar image using one of these as well. Now, these are everywhere. In fact, you're probably watching this video on a phone right now. But the camera isn't the most important thing. Maybe nice, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is light, because without that, there's no photo. But before we talk about cameras and lights and things like that, let's first set up the scene so we can see what we're working with. For this photo, I wanted a side view of the baggage car as it's rolling down the track. And I'll be using these various diorama pieces I created a while ago as my scenery. I'm not going to worry too much about the sky, since it won't be prominent in the photo anyway, so I'll just use this large foam board placed behind the trees to at least cover up the power tools hanging off my wall. I like having all these pieces of scenery separate as it lets me rearrange the scene as I go. Once I like the general placement of things, I'll place my camera in the spot I'll be taking the photo from. Any future adjustments I make to the scenery will be made while looking through the viewfinder. This way I know exactly what will be in the photo once I take it. Alright, so now that we have the scene mostly set up, I do want to touch on one thing and that's composition. So composition is a topic that spans every genre of photography, and I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritties about it, but I do want to touch on a couple things as it relates to the photograph that I'm crafting up here. So if I could give you one piece of advice on composition, that would be to simplify your scene. Uh, too many distracting elements tend to confuse the viewer, and it just looks cluttered. I mean, just take the background of this image right here. I've got a light over here, uh, I've got things hanging off the wall, um, it just looks really distracting. It's not really, all this stuff is not relevant to the photo or the video I'm trying to create. I intentionally left it like this as an example of what that means. So when we're simplifying our scene, there's things that we can do like zooming in on the thing that we want to focus on, um, get rid of distracting elements. So if there's pieces of things in the background, for example, I had the power tools hanging off the wall, so I put up a big uh, white piece of foam board so that you couldn't see that stuff. I removed those elements from the scene and that makes the composition a lot stronger. So I'm making a thumbnail image of a baggage car for my mail call video. So I just want to focus on the baggage car. I don't want to worry about the trees in the background. They're there, but they're blurred out. They're simplified. And so everything I do simplifies that one part of the scene to tell the story I want to tell. Another aspect related to composition is the angle of view that you're creating your image from. This can have a huge impact on how the viewer perceives what they're looking at. I've taken a lot of portraits and a lot of my subjects wanted to appear confident and successful. One way to do that was to photograph them so that my camera was angled slightly upwards so that my lens was physically lower than their eyes by just a little bit. This gives the person in the photograph more power and strength. On the flip side, Photographing something looking down at it gives the illusion that the subject in the photograph has less power than the viewer. In my photograph, I wanted to give the baggage car a little bit of strength, so I chose an angle where I'm looking slightly up at it. 
Okay, so now that our composition is coming along, the scene looks pretty good, we need to talk about lighting. Now, lighting is extremely important because without light, there's no photo. Um, so in order to create the scene we want here, um, let's kind of set up what we need to do. So what I'm looking for is, let's, like we're out on a nice sunny day, we're photographing a train track side, uh, we're not really worried about the sky, it's not really a big prominent part of the photo, I just need to simulate sunlight somehow. Now, when we think about what it looks like to be out on a nice sunny day, uh, normally we think of the sun, obviously there's one big directional light coming down, it's casting shadows everywhere, but that's not the only thing it's doing. It's actually, when you're outside, light kind of wraps around everything, it bounces off of things. It, not everything that's away from the sun is in shadow. Uh, we can still see the details in those shadows, and that's because light, light bounces everywhere. So what we need to do first to simulate sunlight, because I'm in a basement, is I need light to be bounced everywhere. And to accomplish that, I have these three LED strip lights in my basement. I purposely installed them in the positions they're at when I set up my basement down here, um, just for the purposes of doing video and photos and things like that. What these three lights are going to do is they're going to flood the entire room with light. Light's everywhere. It's, it's even. It's consistent. There's not a lot of shadows. Um, so, but that doesn't really look like sunlight. We need shadows. All that's going to do is it's going to fill in all the details that we need. Then we can come over with something like this, which is a directional light. This is a spotlight. Um, they're also called hot lights. And they will burn you. <laughs> At least this one will. It's burned me. So um, what we can do with this is we can provide a kind of like our miniature sun. It's one directional light. And on this one, it has what are called barn doors. And this just helps you direct the light exactly where you want it to go so you can control the lighting in the scene. Now, you may not have access to one of these, but you can accomplish the same thing with one of those utility clamp lights with the little cones on them. You can clamp some like makeshift barn doors on those and accomplish the same thing. So we're going to use this to simulate our sun. This is going to cast our shadows the way we want it. And I think for this, I'm going to have my sun come from slightly behind and maybe to the left uh, because that's where I have room for a light. Um, and I think it'll look nice. It'll have a nice nice light um, on top of the uh, rail car and then it'll cast shadows down the hill. And we're not gonna worry about the shadows being too dark because again, these strip lights are providing all that ambient light that's gonna fill in our shadows. Okay, so my scene's all set up. I added a tender and a coach to the train so it doesn't look like it's just sitting there on the tracks. Is actually part of a train now. I got my sunlight coming in. It's casting the shadows the way I like it. All my ambient light is filled in. The one thing I did notice as I'm adjusting my camera settings is it looks the shadows are a little too dark for me uh, because that that directional light is very bright. I had to change my settings. So what I'm going to do to bring in more light here is use this piece of foam cord uh, or foam board here. And what this does is this acts as a reflector, which basically allows me to control light even more. So what I can do is I can bring it down here and angle it, and I can fill in the light wherever I need it. So in this case, I want to fill this side of the train, so I'm just going to angle it the way I like it here, turn my camera back on, my preview. And then I can see in the viewfinder here, as I'm moving this uh, foam board, it's filling the light in various parts. So I'm going to find a spot I like, take the photo, and that looks great. So we're all done there. I'm just going to probably take a couple more photos, I'm just zooming in, zooming out, so I have more room to crop. And then with that, the photo is basically, uh, basically done. All right, and so there we have it. I've got a photo that I really like, and at this point maybe you're thinking, hey, Joey, that's great. You took a photo using a really expensive camera, that I don't have, right? So if you remember, we're also going to shoot with this as well. This is a newish phone. It's a Galaxy 7 by Samsung, and I think it's got a 10 megapixel camera on it. For a thumbnail photo that we'll be creating here, uh, that's going to be just fine. Phones have come a long way. Um, you get some pretty good detail out of them. Plus, the default camera apps that come with these phones have like a pro mode where you can adjust the settings, change your colors, things like that. So. Uh, that's going to be uh, just fine and dandy. All I have to do is switch this out and bring the phone in. So what I did was I picked up one of these little phone uh, stands that you can attach to a light stand or um, like a tripod. They're super cheap. I think this was like seven or eight bucks. 
And all you have to do is put it in here, clamp it down, and then I can get my angle that I had before and then just use this as my viewfinder and then just take the photo. I already have the light that I need. The composition's already the way I want it. Um, all I have to do is figure out the position here, maybe adjust this a little bit, and I'm good to go. All right, so as you can see, at the end of the day, the camera really wasn't the most important part. It was all those other things, like the lighting, the composition, all those other elements put together. Now, you can create these photos anywhere, including in this messy basement, and you can get some great results. All you have to do is set it up right and simplify the image. So, um, I could use either this or this for the final thumbnail. Um, I kind of like this one just because I'm a little bit partial to it. But I hope you'll be able to learn some tips and tricks that you can use for photographing your own model trains. And if you're interested in seeing more train-related photography videos, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll create some more of these in the future. So, I hope you're enjoying these, and if you're interested in seeing more, consider subscribing so you don't miss out. And as always, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.